Welcome to the We Are Libertarians Daily Podcast. I am your host, Hody Johns, and I'm here with my good buddy, Dale Melchin. Dale, how's it going, man? Going all right, Hody, but didn't Dear Leader say that you're not supposed to call me buddy and that we're supposed to be hosts? Oh, this is my other host, Dale Melchin. <laughs> Sorry, I had a little programming code with what D- Dear Leader planted into my brain. Wait, what? Are you saying, <laughs> Hody Johns, are you saying, what are you, are you trying to communicate to me that something is wrong that you might be a robot uh if i blink twice i'm not a robot okay okay oh i I lost count anyhow uh three times i i don't know robots are better at counting than humans i think and i'm still pretending to be like a human so i have to make these accidental errors but uh Let's get down to it, Dale, buddy. Uh, you and I, we're talking about some life improvement processes in the meantime, and today we wanted to talk about communication. There, we could, um, Being that there's like millions of textbooks about communication, we probably can't get into all of it, but let's talk about, uh, you're the advice guru. Give me what you just, your, your basic advice about improving your, te- your communication techniques. Well, first of all, I'm not a guru. I'm just another guy on the journey. That's how I'm branding myself. But if you keep calling me that, I'll, uh-huh. I'll, t- I'll take it graciously. But um, I think one of the first things that in terms of communicating less badly, which is how I'm phrasing this just based on the day that I have had, um, which I will not communicate that on air. Um, I think the first thing you need to think about when you want to communicate well is to speak forthrightly and simply that means to act authentically and to say what's on your mind, even if you do it badly. Um, I think that's one place to start. Um, and then I think the second area is learning to know your audience. Um, you have to know who you're talking to. And so while you can be forthright with, with everybody, you may not be able to be what, what people call quote unquote blunt with another person. You might make them cry. And if you're talking to a, another guy on the construction site, if you pussyfoot around too much, um, they're just going to get mad at you and tell you to get to the point. So you have to make sure that your communication lines are synced up properly in order to do that. I think that's a good starting point in any discussion of communication. Know your audience and speak truthfully, truthfully and forthrightly. What so, about you? You give me two techniques, and I, I'm going to push back not entirely on both of them, but basically ask you a question about the, both of them so you can help elaborate. So the first one, it is hard for me. I know sometimes when people, you know, you say speak your mind. I certainly believe that, you know, the squeaky wheel is the one that gets the oil. If people don't know what your troubles are, Mm -hmm. they're going to treat you like you have no troubles and nothing will ever get fed there. At the same time, I find that it's easy for people to turn into like complaint machines. And so when everything, when when you do say everything that's on your mind and everything is just complaint after complaint after complaint, People dismiss the bad stuff that you say because everything's bad stuff. And so when something's like really serious, so let me limit, I I guess I'll save the second question I had, but, but address that real quick. What would you say a good balance, a way to balance? Well, it's a, it's a dichotomy. Mm -hmm. And when I was thinking of that, I wasn't necessarily thinking of complaining because you can go too far with it. Um, I've had numerous folks, um, both, well, IRL and online that'll that'll do that. It's highly contextual. Now, if you're talking about one-on-one communication, you want to be able to, if you're speaking to a specific topic, you want to be able to speak what you know, if anything, to the topic and, and do it well and, and say what you're thinking and say it in a way that kind of going over into number two, you know, the number two territory, say it in a way that, that it gets the point across to them, if that makes any sense. Because you can go too far on the other side of the house and just be a complaint machine. Yeah. Well, and, and I certainly... And it's not, I, again, I, I'm not making this all just about complaining. That's just what comes up to me when I think of people that always say what's on their mind. And mm-hmm. they'll post like eight things a day about why their life is bad. And sometimes you're just like, man, like none of it's getting addressed because it's it, it's as though you've overwhelmed the people you're communicating it right. to. And so I'm just like, I want to help boost you out of whatever funk you're in, but it requires like a full-time person. And I'm just like your friend. Like I I feel like if I were to help this person, they'd still be drowning in a million other things. So I, I don't know where to start. Well, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things that just popped into my mind. The problem with being a complaint machine on that side of the house is 
not only are you bringing everybody else down, but you're also forging a chain that binds you to your problems, metaphysically speaking. I mean, because the more, you know, one of the, I forget who said it. I think it was Aristotle. We are what we repeatedly do. Um, so therefore, every every action becomes a habit, something along those lines. I'm probably botching that up. But that's the, that's the first problem you run into. And then the other part of it is no one takes you seriously. And yes, you do need a full-time person to help you out with that. And that's typically in the form of a, of a therapist or a counselor if you can, um, if you can afford something along, along those lines. I mean, especially if it's just constant complaining, if that makes any sense. That's where it gets into full-time help territory. Yeah. Well, and I don't want people to repress it either. I don't want people listening to this to misunderstand me. If you really feel as negatively as you're communicating and everything you're communicating, everything is that bad. Like you said, yes, you should go seek help. Like, and so, and I don't want you to shut up about it. You need to talk about it. But at the same time, you need to talk to people who actually care about you because if you keep throwing it back into the void, you're going to throw it and it, you're going to feel even lonelier than you already do. Cause you're like, mm. man, I keep throwing this all my thousands of Facebook friends and now I only get like one or two reacts on mm. like very serious problems in my and life. And they're laugh reacts. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And, and for your enemies who always seem to find you on Facebook as well, uh, <laughs> the laugh reacts when you're having a really bad problem. Well, uh, that I was going to say, that prompts me to think about it. I don't mean to interrupt your thought, Hody, but that prompts me to think of another thing. The other thing about good communication is knowing when to shut up and knowing when to have a filter turned on and knowing when to, when to actually listen. Um, I think that comes in with the person who, you know, whether it's somebody who's just complaining all the time or someone who's happy all the time, I mean, great. I'm glad you're happy, but sometimes people are just having a, a horrible day and they don't want to hear about, you know, the, the latest you know, whatever good things going on in your life, you need to be able to turn around. And that doesn't, and I'm speaking more along the lines of person to person communication rather than Facebook. Mm -hmm. But I think both worlds, apply, both worlds, um, I don't want to say collide, but I think it applies in both places. Sometimes you have to learn to just to know when to be quiet and, and actually listen because you have to, in order for you actually to speak intelligently, you have to be able to be listening and hearing things, if that makes any sense. Yeah, of course. And I think you have to, for me, I'm also talking about getting off of, just Facebook. Facebook is a specific type of social media, social whatever. But I think that you need to, tra we're even both talking about how you need to transfer some of this away from friends that might know you lightly to people that will take you seriously and are able to do something about it. And that can help you feel a lot less lonely. Um, so to your second part where you said, um, I believe pussyfoot was the term you used when people kind of, kind of around the bush, being fe yeah, featherweight around an issue and don't really want to get too, too involved with it. And you just want to, you know, say what you have to say is, is there really no room for buttering up information for these, the, some of these folks or, or what there is, yeah. there is. And I, and I mean, when, and when I say pussyfoot or being indirect, I mean it in the sense of you don't really say what you need to say in terms of, because you lack courage or because you, you may be a coward because there is a there is a place for for flanking for instance with you know i i am unfortunate well fortunately and unfortunately in a situation where i have had to bend the knee to another tradesman um there are times where i have to speak i i work for someone else other than myself that's what i mean i'm using terms from game of thrones so no i i know what bend the knee means i just you're you're good enough you should be on your own man hey you know, that's an offline topic conversation. <laughs> okay. The point Sorry. that I'm getting at is um, she prefers very direct communication. And I've learned a couple times the hard way when I've tried to really give a lot of context. She's like, just tell me what happened. And I'm like, this is what happened. So typically, if it's, if it's a situation like that, I'll just get right to the point and then give context as needed. Now, in other situations, like in a corporate situation, and um, one of my gurus, Jocko, talks a lot about this, um, learning to flank and maneuver. You know, the boss tells you to do something. If it doesn't endanger lives, just do it. But then the way you give your pushback is um, you do it sometimes like, hey, boss, um, I noticed this thing that, that we're doing. Um, th this might be a better way of doing it. And what do you think? You know, giving it back that way. That's where the flanking, maneuvering, or being indirect comes in. That's a way to do it that's being courageous. And maybe I just pussyfooted around your whole question there, but I think that's the... Uh, no, I, I got the total gist of it. Uh, a funny story about that. I was debating whether sharing or not, but I feel like people keep asking me to share personality because that robot joke we made at the beginning is uh, 
Th- those accusations are starting to get overwhelming. So Did let I me hurt get- your feel, Hody. <laughs> so allow me to give you a story about my personal life. Uh, so <laughs> one day I came home from work, and Miguel was there, and she was like, "Hey, how's work? Oh, everything's fine." She's like, "Just so you know, like the dog was kind of you know by your computer today, and, like got scared and jumped." And I was like, "Oh, that's weird. It's a weird thing to even tell me, but that's weird. Okay." And then uh, 15 minutes pass, you know, we're, I think at the time I was still a TV watcher. So I was, you know, making some food, watching some tube. And she was like, yeah, he like, um, he like got tangled on like a cord or something like that. And that's probably what scared him. And I'm like, oh, okay, no big deal. You know, whatever. And then 15 minutes later pass, you know, we're talking about other things. And she's like, yeah, he like might have seen something fall off the desk or something like that. And I'm like, what, what, what's going on right now? And I figured it out. I was like, did the dog knock over the computer? And she's like, yeah, I just didn't want to tell you. I thought you might be really mad or something. And I was like, you can just tell me the dog knocked over the computer. I don't need you to take forever with this type of thing. But I think she was scared that I would like overreact or hit the dog or something like that. But uh, I am not that type of person. Robots don't hit dogs. We don't experience emotion like that and take it out that I mean good people don't hit dogs. We don't experience those type of emotions and, and hit, but I understand what she was going for. She was just trying to make me feel good about it. Like, and butter me up just in case I would overreact about it. And like you said, it's really about knowing your audience. You know, sometimes they just get angry having like, why didn't you just tell me, you know, right off the bat. I think I may have lost Dale here. So I'm going to get Dale back here in just a minute, but you're going to have to hear me talk for, for a little bit. Uh, Dale, welcome back, my friend. How are you doing, buddy? Hey, my, my uh, computer crashed. Oh, you're okay. Uh, we're glad to have you back. So, I'm not sure how much of the story you heard, but... Uh, I, heard a, I heard something about the dog making the computer crash, and that's when my computer crashed. <laughs> it reached, the, my story reached through the ether and got to... And not only that, and not only that, it went crash. <laughs> Oh, it was stuck on like whatever Val I said last. That's good. Cool. So you got like the song version of that, but uh, but yeah. So so one of uh, let's talk about what I would like to say in terms of communication. You've mentioned a couple. I'll throw a couple your way as well. I'm a huge believer in the love languages uh, and understanding because I think with communication, it's like speaking a different language. I think a lot of times people like me, I'm very binary. You either told the truth, you told a lie. But I think it's more when you are talking about communicating effectively, someone you're actually more talking like in the same language. Like if someone's like Spanish or English, you can tell someone the truth in Spanish, but if they only understand English, it's not going to get, it's not going to go forward to them. So for example, uh, well, we talk about the five love languages, uh, gifts, quality time, words of affirmation, acts of service and physical touch. And those are each a different language, a different way to communicate something to somebody. And so when you want to tell somebody you love them, for me, I'm very verbal. And so when I, one of the big mistakes that I made with my first marriage, um, and, and believe me, everything was her fault, but one of the things that I could have done better, I'm kidding. Oh my God. <laughs> one of the things that I could have done better was learning her love languages. Cause I'm a very verbal person. And so for me, she would say something like, I just don't feel like you love me anymore. And I'm like, I tell you that all the time, but it doesn't communicate effectively. Again, it's just like you're speaking a different language to somebody. So she just doesn't receive it. I, I would have had to do something different in order to communicate that effectively to her. I'll stop before my other point to get your feedback. What are your thoughts on, on the love languages or, or anything that I just said? Well, my troll response, and this is mainly to antagonize people in my past, was that the love languages are nonsense, but they're actually not. Um, my wife and I have, have gone over, you know, I haven't actually read the books, but and I'm, I'm looking around because there's evidently a storm rolling through here, so that's why I'm kind of like doing this. But uh, my, and we've, we've talked about love languages. I'm, I'm one of the people that enjoy my main two are acts of service and, and physical touch. Hers is physical touch and gifts, I think. And it took us a while to fig- to get on the same track. Now, you know, I'm not going to get as personal as you are, but there, 
I mean, there were times when it was when it was rough sledding when we didn't um, when we didn't know what each other's languages were. But then once we figure it out, it's just you know it's kind of like finding the right button to press. You know, in the in the cage of marriage, quote unquote cage of marriage, so to speak. You know, the um, you put you learn to push each other's buttons in a good way. You might say when you know the language and you speak it fluently. Yeah, and. And I think it's just the only way. And and I look at them and there's some of them that I don't care about at all. Mm. Um, I <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I enjoy physical touch as much as any male experiences physical touch. But for me, it's not really communication. It's like a roller coaster ride. I'm just having a good time with physical touch. <laughs> You know, and so, like, I admit, for me, that's not necessarily like, oh, my gosh, that, like, really impacted my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably one of the few guys that actually has, like, receiving gifts as one of my. Now, I don't, that's not, hey, give Odie things, you know, just to show you love them, although I won't turn any down. But this is also, like, when I was at a really dark point in my life, I just remember my, my mom and my brother so very thoughtful. And my brother, Woody, um, I've had him on the show before, but he's just, he's just a a thoughtful person and was like, Hey, look, I know you're going through a hard time. I really don't know how to make it better. Like uh, uh, everything you're saying just seems like a whirlpool of darkness and, and you're in a really scary place and I'm scared for you, but I care about you. And I got you a comic book from your like favorite comic book author (laughs) and he sent it to me. And it's just one of those things that like touched my heart. I teared up. Like it just meant so much to me to get that in the mail. And I didn't know myself well enough to know that like receiving gifts was one of my love languages. And so it was one of those things that taught me that said, and, and the, the thing is, is when we're talking about communication, not just know who you're speaking to. I think love languages, especially is know who you are. Right. Like, no, because that's the way I can say, hey, just so you know, these type of things are the way that I understand love. You don't want to see somebody waste and toil their time or whatever it is they're doing in something that doesn't mean very much to you. you right. Know? It could be how they want to speak it to you. And clearly they're willing to put in the work if they're doing to the other, the, any of the other things. But yeah, it, it's, it, it could be a waste for them and, and not, uh, not effective. And you end up falling out of love with people who you should be in love with. Um, yeah. and then, and, and it goes beyond just falling in love. They call them love languages because of who, who your partner is. But like I said, I had one with my brother, you know, you experience them with your friends and, and, and you should know each other. And I think we should be able to share them more often. So that way we, we know how to talk with each other better. I don't know how someone will respond to something unless I know their, their, you know, their language is what's meaningful for them. I can talk at them all day. Uh, but unless I know they love languages, I'm going to be wrong. The second one that I wanted to say, and this was kind of, uh, this was the biggest one, the biggest difference maker in my life in effective communication. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's part of several steps, but I really only want to talk about the first step because I think everything is resolved after the first step and it's being able to communicate someone else's issue, grievance, or problem as well or better than they communicated it themselves. So when someone says, uh, you know, I, I'm having this problem at work. Yeah, all right, here's, a, here's a classic example. I really don't like this person at work. They're not very nice to me. Ask some questions about it. Figure out how it is. And it says, well, it sounds like, let's call her Karen, because nobody likes people named Karen. <laughs> uh, it sounds like Karen has problems at home, and she's taking them out on you. Does that sound right? And if you give the other person the opportunity to, see, to say, yes, that sounds right, you really can then start actually fixing the problem because Dale, I know you'll understand this. How many times have you spent hours of an argument? And I know not with your, your gal, but you've had this happen in your life, but just hours in argument, never understanding each other's problem. All the time. It's the, it's the bulk of it for me. (laughs) And and not to get, and not to get political on this clearly non-political podcast that we're doing. But gen- gen- generally, it's been with folks that don't, that there's very few ideological points of contact with, whether it's Republicans or, um, or lefties, honestly. Oh, honestly. Yeah. I mean, how many times do you say they are constantly reiterating, reiterating their own point because they don't feel like the other side understands it. And I think that especially let's let's let, I'll wrap up the politics here. But when you're having a political disagreement, and you say, "Hey, listen, 
you know, uh, welfare is a good example, especially we as libertarians, we're against the welfare state. Mm -hmm. But people would be so much more open to us because we have such a positive message for people in that situation that, but we just constantly hound on no welfare. We're going to take your stuff. We're going to take your stuff. How much of a service would we do ourselves as libertarians to say, hey, it sounds like you're in this situation and you're concerned that if we end the welfare state, you're not going to be able to afford these things. Does that sound right? Yeah. To give them that opportunity. And, and even if they say, well, that's not quite right. I'm also worried about this. This Give them the opportunity to say everything and communicate it back. You know, they say the, the rephrase is what they call it, that right. they phrase it, you phrase it in your own words. And so for them, that makes them know that you're not just repeating what they say, that you really understand and get it, you know, and, and, and so many people feel, I mean, we talk about this being the age of loneliness right now and, and how much more, less loneliness would they have and how much more would they trust you to give them advice or, or to listen to your point of view if they know that you understand the problem first. Yes. So to put it, to put what you've just said into my words, Talk to when someone's talking to you, take what they <laughs> take what they're saying and rephrase it in a way that completely straw I mean that could <laughs> rephrase it in a way that with your own words in a way that communicates that you've understood them. Right. I am actually glad you made the straw man joke because Good. and let's let's even take this out of politics because this is what we do to our personal relationships all the time. We're so concerned that our point of view isn't heard that we're unwilling to let the person's problem be fully realized. And so we do straw man, man them like, and not in a political way, in a very personal way. We're just yeah. like, we'll, we'll say like, I get it. Work stinks. You know what I mean? Or you don't like the people you work with that, you know, like, and, and, and it's like, well, I don't feel like you understand why this is annoying. Like it's annoying because it interferes with this or it brings me down. I'm in customer service and I need to stay positive and, and I have this person constantly dragging me down. So if you're just saying, Oh, I get it. Work stinks. You know, that's it. You know? And so if all you throw to, you know, to your, your partner or your friend is okay, dude, I get it. Like you don't like your job very much. Well, that, that's, you know, or, or you straw man them and be like, yeah, people are annoying. Get over it. You know, it's like, well, this person is annoying for a different and very specific reason. Like, can you please hear me yeah. out? You know? And, and, and so I think we, the, the embarrassing thing is we do straw man people that way by saying, let me make your arg argument a joke. We, we, we take the rephrase process and take it for granted because we'll rephrase it, but rephrase it like kind of with our own point of view in mind. And mm -hmm. I think that's the point where you just need to say, I'm fully in your shoes because you'll get a chance to phrase your problem later, right. you know, but, but I think you need to just be like, I'm fully in your suits. You're, you're not conceding anything yet. That's the last compromise is the last part of the disagreement, right? When you're having an argument or a problem in communication, compromising and getting over it, that's way down the road. So when you're starting at the beginning and just talking about phrasing, I think people are so worried about giving away the barn, about being like, well, if I, you know, concede that she has a problem, then I'm going to end up having to give, give her more than I want. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. No, I, I hear you, Hody, and I apologize. I'm on my phone. I'm, I'm trying to do the, help you with help, help you. I'm trying to do this podcast on my phone. And so there's, I live next door to a car wash and I'm going to communicate some things that are annoying to me right now. If you, <laughs> you can hear the music in the background, uh -huh. because picking up on the speakers. And then my, I told you before my, my computer had crashed. So that's why I'm all like doing this. I'm doing, saying this also for the benefit of the audience. Tom, but what you're getting at is folks, when you, when you tersely rephrase what they've said to you, it's a way of dismissal and, yes. and not to sound like, not to sound like an SJW. I said it, how dare I? Um, oftentimes dismissal can be, can be used in a way just simply shut someone down and try to get them to get on with life. And ultimately I have to concede, I will compromise at this point. That's not healthy or helpful. The, the time that that's typically helpful is, and, you know, I may be going over a line by saying this, the time that's helpful is when a person has been giving you the same problem repeatedly has, and you've offered advice or you've offered a solution or you've listened, but they still keep bringing it up. So the only way to deter the bad behavior is by, listen, I get what you're doing if you try to fix it. So there is a, there, there is a dichotomy there as well. Yes, you have to validate their concerns. 
but depending on the relationship that you have with them, it's also appropriate to move them into action. If that even gels up with what you're with what you're talking what we're talking about here, because I think that's another dichotomy to address as well. What do you think? Yeah, the the now what's the what's the dichotomy that you're you're saying specifically? The dichotomy the dichotomy comes between you know when we're talking about when we're having a conversation between two folks and you want to validate you want to rephrase what they're saying in a way that validates their concerns. And you don't want to be dismissive of it. The other side, the other extreme from that is, is rephrasing it in a way that says, yeah, I get it, work sucks. You're rephrasing it tersely or in a way that's dismissing them. So that's that's where the dichotomy lies. And it also depends upon the, the level of friendship or relationship that you have with the person to be able to, um, to use either one of those methods. You want to find it somewhere in the middle mm-hmm. where, you, where you validate their concerns and you push them into action. That's true, and and I think I guess I don't worry too much about I, I don't I, and I'm not encouraging getting in other people's business. But I think mm-hmm. if they're already sharing the problem with you, mm-hmm. then they at least want you to understand. Even if they right. don't want you to solve, at the very least, they want you to understand. Otherwise, they wouldn't talk to you about it. You know, it wouldn't right. be on Facebook if they don't want somebody to understand. It wouldn't you know, it, it, you wouldn't be having the conversation to begin with. So I think at the very least, even if they're not looking for a solution, which as a guy, I say as a guy, as a human being, people that are not looking for the solutions do kind of drive me crazy. I, mm-hmm. I admit it. Like, and there are some people who just need to complain. And I love my gal and she'll be the first one to admit that sh- she just needs to complain, feel understood, and then she's over it and she's good to go for the rest of the day. But the way I get you, the way you get out of that, because I don't want to be part of that conversation unless I'm talking solutions, is right. to get that phrasing down and to say, and to, for her to feel understood, because then the conversation ends. Mm-hmm. Yes, if she wants a solution, then it'll keep going. But then it's a conversation I want because she actually wants a solution, right? Mm-hmm. But if I rephrase it correctly, she'll be like, "Oh, he gets it. He understands exactly what I'm talking about." Conversation over, you know. And so, so either way, you're in you're in a good place. You know, you're either are not arguing about stupid things you don't have to argue about, or you found a solution. Exactly. Uh, we do have time for, for maybe a, a one more thing from each of us. I know for me, and this is a, this is a big one is not being distracted. I always, what? Have, <laughs> huh? You know, uh, not having a car wash next to me helps also not being on my cell phone <laughs> helps. Um, look, the, <laughs> look what this is doing right now. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, dude. That is that is not fun. Uh, the, the, I feel bad for you, Hody Johns. Yeah, that is. Um, as you can tell from the story with my girlfriend and my dog, she knows my computer is very important to me. So right. I I understand your level of anguish when it crashes. <laughs> uh, Don't I, talk to me like that, Hody Johns. I yeah. want the dismissive. Get over. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where she thinks I would hit my dog. So it's, it's apparently very frightening when, when something bad happens with my computer. Uh, uh, dismissive can be funny. I think with guys, we like to dis, I, I think we like to jab each other a lot. That's like one of the ways we tell each other oh. we love each other. Um, but at the same time, I think you also have to recognize when something genuine is coming up and be like, hey, this isn't a good time to jab. This is a good time to like be understanding. Uh, but to go back to my point, making the time and actually setting aside and fully investing in it. Look, here's the thing. You can have a distracted conversation where you're doing a million other things for eight hours or it'll stretch on for days if you let it. Or you can have a really focused conversation with somebody and have it last five minutes and then get back to enjoying your life. You know, because you just, you've actually addressed it. You've given them all the time. You've given it all your focus. For me, it's hard. And here's the thing. Your schedule sometimes can't wait. And this other person, even if you love them, this other person can. So sometimes you say, hey, listen, I've got a podcast coming up in like 15 minutes. What you're talking about is very important to me, but I'm like, I'm going to be thinking about this the whole time. So don't, you know, now is not a good time to to come up with some issues. If you want me to genuinely like listen to you and respond, I'm saying like a lot. I always do that when I'm tired. I'm back from vacation. We took a little 12 hour drive, got back uh, yesterday, early morning. And I'm messed up still. So I apologize for the likes and ums. I will uh, get those cleared out as the day goes. But you just need to engage in the conversation fully. It, it, mm-hmm. Invest in it, fully invest in it, and it, you will pay the dividends earlier. 
I am treating conversation as though it's bad. Like it's something that the goal is to get out of. That's not it. But if it's a problem, you do want that addressed as quickly and efficiently as possible so that you can have positive conversation. I'm right. not saying the goal is to end conversation, but the goal is to end the problems and the issue at hand and then get back and spend the majority of your time conversing in a really positive way. I'm not going to stop jabbing you. You know, that's still going to be 90% of our conversations because that's who we are. But when we need that 10% to be like, hey, I need you to hear me right now, we're both ready to have that. I know exactly. it's a lot of time. So go ahead and you, get, you, you can either give me feedback on that or give me a new one or whatever you think. Is this, is this final thoughts or is this just? No, uh, I'm going to put extra time with that. We've been getting good back on our, our self-help episodes on these episodes. So I think, uh, I think we're going to give them a little extra today. So, so give me, give me something. Okay. I think when well, you're, I'm sorry. It's, it's hard. The car wash. Cody, it's so hard. And I even shut my window to, to block out the sound. So, <laughs> um, I think what you said about that is important because it, it is highly contextualized between, you know, two, two brothers jabbing at each other is one thing. And typically, and, and when I was talking about calling to action, I, I was kind of phrasing that between friends or even between men, because that's, that's the side of the house that's important. Or if somebody comes to you for advice and wants to say, what, 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 Odie Jones? You said men, and that's the side of the house that's important. You're uh... a... Yeah. I didn't mean it that I didn't some thin Bambi ice here, my friend. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it like that. I, that's, that's what I was driving at in that, in that context. I didn't, I'm not saying that men are more important than women. I meant the, the aspect of the important piece is friends. And you were jabbing at me again, weren't you? Uh, I was just saying what you said. I'm just repeating what you said. <laughs> okay. So the important piece is what I was trying to say was important was the context that I was trying to put that into. If I can offer that as a backpedal. All right. I, put it into context. <laughs> there you go. So it, it's, it's very layered. Now, I was actually, it's funny because you brought up the whole partner communication side of the house, which is more important than our individual genders. Um, see, there you go. Um, you were reading my mind when you were talking about how to communicate with with a wife or a girlfriend because most of the time they're looking to vent. Now what I like to do is I like talking to, to uh, my wife and, and, and hearing about whatever's going on with her. Um, I'm not a robot like you and try to shut the conversation down <laughs> as soon as possible. Um, I cannot minus understand. five minutes till end of podcast. Okay. You just, <laughs> so I found that, if it's a pressing issue, I listen to her. And then I ask at the, uh, after she's said her piece, I have some ideas. Do you want to hear them? And I'll usually give her an option. I will give her an option always. I mean, um, and if she doesn't want it, it's like, okay, you know, we'll just go back to what we were doing. And I think that's, that's the critical part is to know the context. So you do have to know yourself and you have to know the folks around you, um, in order to be able to communicate effectively in that regard. You and I fall into, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, you and I probably fall into typical gender roles, correct? Yes, Hody Johns. All right, and- Some of us, some of us, more, some of us more typical, um, <laughs> other one. You're making fun of my peach fuzz. <laughs> uh, hey, it took me a whole week and a half of vacation to grow this beauty out. I, I don't want anybody knocking my neck beard. Cody uh, Jones, I love the, I love the stash and the soul patch. I will give you that. I will not give you heat. I will not give you shade for that. I had somebody offer money to grow my mustache out like Wyatt Earp. <laughs> and that is his <laughs> words, not mine. I am. Uh, I could grow to be a hundred years old, and I would not be as 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 uh, hairy as Wyatt Earp. So unfortunately, that's not really on the on the tables. The reason I say this is because um, I don't want to make this sound like listen to us and fall into your gender roles. Look, if you are a guy that likes, look, I like to be heard too sometimes. And sometimes, no, you this don't. Is, this is not often, but I like to be heard. Yes, I do. I'm on a podcast for goodness sake. I must. <laughs> uh, I like to be heard, but I also like to be heard and understood. But also I don't, I kind of have it under wraps 
So I right. def- don't necessarily need somebody chiming in. Now that's not the majority of the time. And I think that, you know, if we're being stereotypical about gender, we'd say that's more of like, that's the feminine role or something. But I understand where it comes from. And sometimes you just say, look, I have it under control. But if you want to glimpse into my world because I care about you, here's what I'm dealing with right now. I have it under control, but, you know, just, just so, so you know. And I think that's the majority. And again, I don't want to stereotype. But I think when we talk about people that aren't looking for solutions, it's like, what, you just like to complain? Well, no, they like to be understood. You know, right. and, and who doesn't, right? I, they're just looking to be understood, but they have the problem in control. It's not like Karen from work is going to ruin our lives. She has an control. She? she just wants me to understand. What's that? Or is she? Or Yeah, or is she going to wreck our lives? I don't know. Sometimes with how it sounds, you'd be surprised. But yeah, well, now's a good time for uh, final thoughts. They, uh, Dale, I'll let you get the first crack at it. I would say if you're going to start, you're going to start taking the first steps to enhancing your communication skills. Listen, and this is old hat, you know, knowledge, but listen, listen twice as much as you talk because you have two ears and one mouth. Um, I would say read your audience well, um, and then tailor your communication to the folks that you're that you're dealing with, and let the main, and again, let the main course of your discussion be focusing on validating the other person and when necessary and when invited to um, call them to action on a solution if it's a problem a situation or just you know just keep throwing it back and forth where you rephrase and and get feedback and just keep tossing the ball around I mean that's the point of conversation those are my final thoughts I'm going to build off what you said. You said tailor your response, and I think that's perfect. Everybody's a unique individual. So we can give you tools all day and things that we've learned. You and I can teach people and and provide advice and understanding and guidance, and there's books and books and books about this. But you have to understand that that everyone is an individual, and everyone's unique. Everyone's going through a different set of problems. Everyone has a different set of strengths and weaknesses. So take everything we say and – Use it where applicable. I think there's a lot of great communication advice, but there's not one standard across the board. There's things that generally work, but as soon as you try to make that applicable to everyone, that's when you start getting into the, what we were talking about earlier, being stereotypical, being a demagogue, being, uh, you know, you say, well, you know, this works for most people, so it must work for you you too. As soon as you start treating somebody like they just want to complain or you know that that's when you're you're gonna lose lose them they say well i just thought you're a woman you just like to complain for fun you know because that's the stereotype and that's wrong so uh that is uh i guess my final thoughts is just tailor uh what what you have to say in your communication to the other person and let them know about what makes you unique and the best to communicate with you uh, Dale, as always, amazing chatting with you, my friend. That was an excellent swip- switch back onto your computer, by the way. Yeah, we had we had a come in from Earth too here. I didn't want to try uh, try doing that while we were in the middle of it, but I figured I'd try to end the show a little more clean cut than uh, the middle of it turned out. And I want to apologize for the to the audience for things going off the rails. I mean, I know it's probably an awkward apology, but uh, yeah. Crap happens sometimes. That could, we could go back into stoicism on that one. <laughs> Maybe next week we'll talk about crafting the perfect apology. That's one I've studied quite a bit. That could be fun. No? We, no, we could do that. That's fine. Whatever <laughs> we'll, you want. we'll talk about something else next week. We'll get it figured out at some point. Yep. Come up. But uh, Dale, good talking to you, man. Yeah, you too, Hody. Oh, and um, I forgot. If you, if, well, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. If you want more of me and my dismissive demeaning – no, um, I'm actually not dismissive and demeaning – uh, simplisticadvice.com. But you know what? If you really want the want good stuff on the politics side of the house as well as other issues, we're libertarians.com and Wall Daily, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, all that fun stuff. Bam. Also, simplisticadvice.com. Simplisticadvice.com, we're libertarians.com. Visit us, tell people you love us. We've been getting a lot of great response, specifically about us dale so i appreciate that so if you're if you are one of the ones who is saying oh i really enjoyed this episode but i don't want to say anything then uh please say something please be i love words of affirmation (laughs) yep that's my favorite telling people tell me yeah just uh you know uh it never gets annoying so if you want to say on a weekly basis that i was the best and dale was the best and that's that's okay we'll let that happen dale you have a good one man you too man bye bye